Hi there. Do you have an open mind? Do you, one, listen, two, consider the source, three, study and inquire slash pray for yourself? Hi, my name is CK and I'm a Mormon. He see. Ask me the questions, Bridge Keeper. I am not afraid. Bridges are created to overcome a gap of some sort. Be it water, empty space, or a dangerous obstacle, they are all meant to give not just safety, but allow communication. Think of this, for example. To safely get the message, would you like to buy some coconuts? The fort is under attack! Or come home now, or you'll be late for dinner. Or just, I'm safe! From point A on this side of the canyon to point B on the other, there has to be a good connection to get it across clearly. So speaking of communication, the late US President Ronald Reagan was called the Great Communicator. But why? The advance of human liberty can only strengthen the cause of world peace. There is one sign that the Soviets can make that would be unmistakable that would advance dramatically the cause of freedom and peace. General Secretary Gorbachev, if you seek peace, if you seek prosperity for the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, if you seek liberalization, come here to this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. It wasn't just because he helped the Berlin Wall fall. He had to be a really great communicator before to get to that spot. Sure, earlier in life he was an actor, which definitely helped his speaking skills. But just because one can talk doesn't mean they can really say anything. A news reporter that had covered Reagan during that presidency wrote in 2004, Reagan paid attention not only to his speeches, but his audience's reaction to them. Elsewhere, it can be found that he had clear values, that he built trust with and in others. He helped others believe in themselves rather than tearing them down to try to change them. So in being a great communicator, President Reagan needed to build bridges of friendship by not just trying to be understood, but trying to understand others. I think his being an actor really helped in that respect. For if an actor or actress can make the viewer forget who they really are in place of the character that they are portraying, then they are award worthy. Okay, so you aren't a president or actor, actress. How or even why would you want to build bridges with those that are different from you? Well, let's start with the why. Something everyone can relate to is the desire to have a relationship with someone. Whether it's an ally, a friend, or romantic, any type will work here. Because romantic isn't supposed to be strictly sexual anyway. For example, sure, I want a great girlfriend, but I want her to be a great friend first. That way, it'll be all that much better and last. Dancil was not only a loved and loving companion, she was a teacher by her noble example. She taught faith, virtue, obedience, and mercy. She taught me how to listen and to love. Because of her, I know all the blessings that can come to a husband, father, and grandfather. All right, this isn't about romantic relationships specifically, so let's talk about friendship. I think I personally have trouble making friends due to my many faults and shortcomings. But what can I, or you, do to make a friend? Again, let's go to some examples of my own. Back in early high school, I was very unfamiliar with making friends, let alone being around them. 
I attribute this mostly to my need to help at home, especially with my autistic brother. So what did I do? Well, at high school lunch, everyone could go around and do their own thing. So I looked for a place that I was comfortable with. For me, this happened to be the hallway of a separate building where students could take a Mormon religious class once a year. Not the hallway, just the building. You know what I mean. Here, I was content eating by myself, but there were other teenagers eating there as well. So I observed, albeit at a distance. Soon enough, they invited me to join. And it might have taken a couple weeks, but I finally sat closer. And then within a year, I was sitting with them and talking with them regularly. For the way, what would you like today? Uh, were you working earlier by chance? Yes, I was. You were? Okay, I came by and I ordered a beefy five layer burrito with no sour cream. And I think you complimented my nail polish. And I just wanted to know if you wanted to have a sleepover tonight. A, a what? A sleepover. A sleepover? Yeah. Really? Yeah. When? Tonight. <laughs> Can you come up to the window? Yeah. How can each of us become such a significant influence? We must be sure to sincerely love those we want to help in righteousness, so they can begin to develop confidence in God's love for so many in the world. The first challenge in accepting the gospel is to develop faith in the Father in heaven who loves them perfectly. It's easier to develop that faith when they have friends or family members who love them in a similar way. Giving them confidence in your love can help them develop faith in God's love. Then through your loving, thoughtful communication, their lives will be blessed by your sharing lessons you have learned, experiences you have had, and principles you have followed to find solutions to your own struggles. Show your sincere interest in their well-being, then share your testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can help in ways that are grounded in principle and doctrine. Encourage those you love to seek to understand what the Lord would have them do. One way to do this is to ask them questions that make them think, and then allow them sufficient time, whether days, hours, months, or more, to ponder and seek to work out the answers for themselves. You may need to help them know how to pray, and how to recognize answers to their prayers. Help them to know the scriptures are a vital source of receiving and recognizing answers. In that way, you will help them prepare for future opportunities and challenges. What happened? I put myself in the right area. I observed where I was and who was around me. I learned ways the others conversed, and then I tried those ways and experimented some of my own to be part of the group. But there was something else here. I wasn't forced to be part of this group. Similarly, as much as I want to convince a person of the truth of the gospel and may want to change someone, it's not my job to do that. And I shouldn't do that. That is the other's job. That is why it is so so important to have options available 